Friday night fireworks at Turner Field? You bet. Last night, Justin Upton provided them with his 14th home run of the year, a towering 461-foot grand slam that helped lead the Braves to an 8-5 win over the Dodgers. Tonight, it's game two of the series, and the Braves look for some more fireworks. Chris Medlin faces Chris Capuano in game two of the series. From Turner Field in Atlanta, a very special night of Braves baseball. A big crowd on hand here in Atlanta for Military Appreciation Night. And boy, do we echo those sentiments. The fine men and women of our armed forces honored before the game tonight and a first pitch strike. You'd expect nothing less as we get you set for game two of our series. It's Braves and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Hi again, friends, along with Braves legend Dale Murphy and Joe Simpson. I'm Chip Carey. Great to be back at the ballpark where the Braves didn't get very good news today. Eric O'Flaherty is a latest member of the Braves bullpen, Joe, to go down with an elbow injury. Yeah, and the news wasn't good after an exam either, Chip. He has a torn ligament in his elbow. He's going to be examined by Dr. Andrews in a couple of days, but surgery is upcoming for Eric O'Flaherty, which means he would be lost for the year. To take his place in the bullpen right now is Corey Rasmus, his brother plays for the Toronto Blue Jays, by the way. He is a Georgia boy. He's been pitching great for Gwinnett, but he's been going to be thrust into a real tough position here in this six-man bullpen right now. But when you think about the Braves' big three at the end of the game, they're down to one, and that's Craig Kimbrell. But there is some good news in Atlanta. It's the fact that for the first time all year last night, the Braves had their envision starting eight together, and Freddie Gonzalez, the Braves' manager, was thrilled with the eight runs Atlanta scored. If you want to go left, right, you got to go through Justin, or, or later on, uh, you, you know, you got to go through um, Chris Johnson, you know. So it's not easy. I mean, I've been in the other shoe, on the, uh, sitting in the, across the uh, across the dugout when that situation arises against us, and, and, it, and it's not easy. It's not easy to do that. And, and today they, they went, you know, left, right, left, and they tried to go through Justin with it, and he made him pay. What a relief for Freddie Gonzalez. He probably literally, Chip, has filled out a different lineup every day, and hopefully we can get a little consistency. But that is the pleasure of this lineup, going left, right, left, having tough matchups out of the pen. Paid off big time last night. And you're right. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Same starting eight for Atlanta in game two of the series as Chris Medlin gets the ball for Atlanta. Chris Capuano gets the ball for the Dodgers. Justin Upton had another huge night. Up, up, and away indeed for the Braves outfielder Tom Hart. We'll talk about his home run hitting prowess when we go back to a special night at Turner Field this evening.
and the Dodgers. Time for some good news here in Braves country, and that's a reminder that Atlanta has the best home run hitter in all of baseball. That's right, Justin Upton was at it again last night. In fact, he wasted no time. Opening day against the Phillies, and he rode this one 460 feet deep into the seats in left center. Not only does he lead the majors in home runs, but he leads baseball in average home run distance. And last night he was at it again. 461 feet for a grand slam and straight into the vomitorium as the Braves came away with a comfy hot from behind victory against the Dodgers. Take a look at these feats for Upton. Every one of his home runs has gone over 400 feet, an average distance of 427. To put it in perspective, Mark McGuire, 1998, his first 14 home runs, averaged 403 feet. He's even impressed Popeye arm Dan Ugla and other guys in the clubhouse, and he looks to keep that going again tonight. So Upton, who hits one every 10 at-bats, will try to get another couple tonight against the Dodgers. And Chris Medlin could use all the help that Upton and his teammates want to provide. He struggled last time out against San Francisco, but he's undefeated in his career against the Dodgers. And when we return, he'll be on the hill. Chris, Joe, and Dale have the call. here at Turner Field. Atlanta won 8-5 last night. Paul Mahalam picked up the win. Craig Kimbrell his 12th save. And that pushes the Braves record to 23 and 18. Atlanta starts play tonight, fellas. A half game ahead of the Nationals who are just as hot as Atlanta, it seems, of late. The Washington Ball Club nipping at our heels as they play baseball out on the West Coast with San Diego. It is a warm, muggy cloudy night and the forecast is for rain showers intermittently around eight nine o'clock tonight with heavy stuff coming down around 11 p.m. Let's hope the bad weather stays away for this is the only visit to town by the Western Division Los Angeles Dodgers. Don Mattingly is their skipper. Here's his Toyota starting lineup. A little bit of a change. They move everybody up underneath Carl Crawford. Matt Kemp sitting second for just the second time this year. Adrian Gonzalez is at first base. Andre Ethier is their cleanup man. Skip Schumacher, Tim Fedorowicz behind the plate. Nick Punto had a good start to the series last evening. D. Gordon's their eighth place hitting shortstop. And longtime Braves nemesis Chris Capuano pitches in bats night. Pitcher on the mound for the Braves tonight is Chris Medlin. He's, makes, he's making his ninth start. Got off to a good start. Chris Medlin like one and one 142 ERA but his last five starts winless and an ERA 
of 4.70 and that batting average is high too and the reason for that is it kind of brings us to our four keys for pitching success tonight for Chris Medlin. He is just off on his command. He's not hitting those pinpoint spots like he hit in the second half of last season. So tonight he's got to go back to hitting those spots and with all the injuries now in the bullpen and with a shorter bullpen with only six guys it's imperative for these starting pitchers to be ready to go deeper in the ball game. He's been going an average of six and two thirds per start. Good work by anybody these days, but he's going to have to crank it up a little more. And you bring up an excellent point, Joe. The starters over the last seven games are averaging a little more than five innings. It's not going to get it done right now. So psychologically, the mood of the ball club, Murph, after a big injury to a vital component of your ball club, and Eric O'Flaherty, the man that suffered it. Well, yeah, sometimes psychologically at first you're a little down, but then you can everybody kind of says to themselves okay we got to step it up you know you can't win divisions pennants world series without going through some adversity people are going to get hurt that's just the way it goes so you can't sit around and say well guys got hurt you know we you know tough break everybody has guys that get hurt you gotta you gotta uh, someone's gotta step up and like i like what joe said guys gotta go a little deeper you just gotta get the job done and and um, you know suck it up a little bit so Carl Crawford leads off for Los Angeles and Chris Medlin pumps over a quick strike. I thought it was interesting Joe what you said about pinpoint control. You, I asked you earlier what what uh, Medlin's challenge has been and you said control. Crawford reaches for that pitch and pops it into shallow left. Andrelton Simmons handles cleanly. Crawford is out number one. But but control is more than just walking people. It's control within the zone. Mm -hmm. We use the word pinpoint location. That's what he's had in the past, right? That's what he started the season out with, and doesn't quite have the pinpoint control. Yeah, he's not walking that many guys. That's not really the issue. Uh, although he did walk five in his last start, which was a real aberration. But he's missing in the zone. He's missing, missing his spots, the, yeah. and he's catching too much of the plate. Matt Kemp had his long hitting streak interrupted last night, and that's nothing new. The Braves have pitched this man awfully tough, as you see on our Ram Trucks power stats. No hits in his last 18 ABs here. Let's hope that continues. One ball, one strike for Kemp. 273 average, 15 RBIs, but one home run. Not a chance for Simmons. Backhanded play. Perfect throw. Kemp is out number two. Here's the rest of the Atlanta defensive lineup tonight. Upton, Upton, and Hayward left to right. Johnson, Simmons, Ugla, and Freeman around the horn from third to first. And Brian McCann is behind the plate. Chris has not pitched that much. He, I should say he hasn't started that much against his hometown team, the Dodgers. Only one start, five other relief appearances, but the numbers that jump out at you 15 and two thirds total innings, one walk, 14 strikeouts. Chris from Artesia, California, that's in southeastern LA County, was the childhood home of former First Lady Pat Nixon. Hmm. One ball, no strikes to Adrian Gonzalez. Good change. Good change up, and that's another pitch that he's had a little trouble with. It just hasn't been there for him, which forces him to go to his curveball for an off-speed pitch, and at times he kind of overthrows that pitch. So one and two for Gonzalez. Here's your umpiring crew with old pal Jerry Lane behind the plate. Alan Porter's at first, Greg Gibson at second, and Hunter Wendelstedt at third. Hunter looks more and more like his dad every day. I was just thinking the same thing. The late great Harry Wendelstedt. Two balls, two strikes. Twenty seven RBIs for Gonzalez and a three thirty eight mark. 
Bounced out towards second. Douglas got it. And Chris Medlin, a 1 2 3, top of the first. Two, three, scoreless first inning. Now it's the Braves' turn. Land off to a good start in the series, winning 8 5 last night. The Toyota starting lineup, the same one through eight that we saw in game one of the series. And Chris Medlin opposes left hander Chris Capuano for the Dodgers. 34 years old, 6 3, 215, out of Massachusetts by way of the University of Duke, where he was a Phi Beta Kappa at Duke. And got his degree in economics. His last eight starts against the Braves, outstanding. He has practically owned them, including a start while he was with the Mets uh, in August of 2011 when he struck out a career high 13 batters and went the distance in a six to nothing shutout win over the Braves. He was on fire that night, and the Braves get to hook up with him again tonight, but he's not off to a very good start. He's one and two with a 660 ERA. His Ford keys to pitching success tonight count. He needs to be ahead in the count to be successful. Features a good curveball and an excellent change and have a good memory about what worked before, even though there's a lot of new faces in this Braves lineup. Andrelton Simmons, the Braves shortstop, gets things started. And that's a strike over the inside corner. Four homers, 16 RBIs for Simmons. He scored three runs. In fact, the top three hitters were awfully productive last evening. Simmons, Hayward, and Upton scored six times collectively against Hyun Jun Ru, Matt Greer, and Paco Rodriguez. Two strikes, one to each side of the plate already from Capuano. Hamilton hit some balls on the nose last night. I thought, he, he, you know, probably should have had it, but he hit one ball to third. But mm -hmm. I think he ended up getting an error, but that was a rocket. And the dirt evens the count. And he reached on an error twice. And some of the Braves players who were saying, Chip, kind of thought that at least one of those should have been a hit. The one to left field that. Crawford whiffed on, and then the one that came out of Cruz's glove. Yeah, the folks on the field, and I won't name names, but thought the ball to third was a rocket. It was really hit hard. But no such luck. And Simmons misses a 79 mile an hour changeup, I guess. Yeah. It was up in the zone and is out number one. That pitch again in the 70s. Again, he's got an excellent change. Even though 
though that one was up he got away with it. He's another guy like the pitcher last night Dale that you've still got to think about using the middle of the field. Yeah, absolutely I think that, that Ambleton saw that one pretty well he's probably shaking his head trying to figure out how he did miss it but I think he took just enough off of it. A strike to Jason Hayward. Two hits, two runs, and an RBI for Jason last night. And there's a number of reasons why you want to use the whole field, but the other reason is pitchers don't like to come inside all that much anyway. They're probably going to get a lot of pitches middle away anyway. It keeps you in a better hitting position, but you know, the scattering report on too many guys, there's not a scattering report out there that says, hey, keep coming in on a guy. High fly ball left center. Kemp going back at the track, leaping at the wall. Kemp brought it back. Wow. What a catch by Kemp, and Hayward tips the cap. That was perfectly timed. Yeah, it looked like he had a beat on it the whole way, knew exactly where the fence was. Good timing. Good swing by Jason Hayward. Ball a little bit away, hit it right, right where it was pitched. Good, good play by Kim. Jason <laughs> going for the sportsmanship award tonight. Yeah. Let's see if Upton say can say catch this one. He swings the first pitch and Kemp in a couple of steps has an easier play. Well, we're off and running. What a play by Matt Kemp in center field to take away a home run from Jason Hayward. We are through one at Turner Field. Still scoreless. In part by ATT Ubers, by Delta Airlines, and by Ford. Quite a start to game two, huh? Chris Medlin, a one, two, three first. Matt Kemp, a great catch to take away a long ball from Jason Hayward, and we head to the second with no score. What's that like? You two are outfielders in the big leagues. What's that sensation like when you're in a visiting ballpark and you time your leap perfectly like Matt Kemp just did. You kind of feel like you hit a home run. You really do. I, it, it doesn't happen that often. I didn't rob home runs that often. But when you when you do contribute defensively uh, it can get things going a little bit mentally for the team. You, you feel as good. No, I don't know. I'm probably exaggerating. You don't feel like you hit a home run. But uh, it's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> Feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. The only guy, guy I did that to was a pitcher. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> Brought one back on a pitcher. <laughs> Who was the pitcher? Uh, remember Tom Griffin? Yeah, the Padres. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. So. 
Kemp saves a run. Now Medlin versus Andre Ethier. Don Mattingly said before the Dodgers got to town, his plan was to give Ethier last night off. Felt he was wearing down just a bit. He had a pinch hit appearance last night. And he starts play this evening with three homers and 13 driven in. Pinch hit appearance in the rain off of Craig Kimbrell. Not a lot of fun. You mentioned about Robin home runs. Actually, I, I'd have to say during my career, we didn't have a lot of fences that were at the height where you could rob a lot of home runs. Most of them were the old round stadiums with, mm -hmm. you know, like Fulton County Stadium. At one time, we had a lower fence, but we didn't have it that long. Uh, you know, Veteran Stadium, uh, Olympic Stadium. I remember San Diego. Before they brought the fence in, was the wall of was the, the wall? Yeah, Jack you just, Murphy Stadium. Yeah. That was huge. And uh, really, Dodger Stadium was one of the few places that you could, mm -hmm. could climb the fence a little bit. Eighth year skies one toward left. Upton's going back a step or two. Justin, plenty of room for Ethier's fly ball. Four up, four down for Chris. And here's Skip Schumacher. He's hitting a buck 94. No homers, six driven in. We told you earlier the Braves had to place Eric O'Flaherty on the disabled list. That is going to get no sympathy from this Dodger club. They have had to use the disabled list 15 times already this year. One reason why the Dodgers are six under 500. Three fifths of their starting rotation on the DL right now. With Beckett going on there a couple of days ago. He was scheduled to pitch tomorrow. Instead, it'll be Matt McGill. Chad Billingsley and Ted Lilly, the other two disabled Dodger starters. Not to mention Mark Ellis and Hanley Ramirez, two everyday players. They really had to shuffle the deck. And a fine catch down the left field line off the bat of Skip Schumacher. Well, I would have to say, we take another look at that. <laughs> I'm really glad the ball found his glove because his babies were sitting right behind that. That was remarkable. I, I uh, you talk about the, the injuries, Chip. I think typically winning pennants is a test of your organizational strength anyway. It's not going to be your starting eight only. It's going to be your bench and, and your whole organization, AAA, everybody. I think that's a great point. Schumacher rolls to first. Two outs. And you heard Tom Hart's interview with Frank Wren, the Braves general manager, before the game. Uh, Atlanta brings up. Corey Rasmus from their minor leagues at this point Frank intimated that there's no plans to go outside the organization for help in the bullpen but that's not to say that come June or July when the trade market starts to percolate a little more that that would not be the case. See Corey taking it in a few more folks here than he's used to seeing at a ball game. But he has been a lot of ball games where his brother has been playing and very fine center fielder in his own right in the big leagues. And he's got a shot to maybe pitch to his brother. That's right. Got a four game series, two home and two away with Toronto coming up. Excellent numbers at Gwinnett. Yes, indeed. Wow. 123 point average. He's said to have an excellent changeup. So you might see him come in against left handers because right now, a very different look to the bullpen. Atlanta has one lefty down there. That's Luis Avalon. That's a good point, Chip, that he's got a pitch. He can stay in there against some left handers with a good changeup. And that one right back through the box by Tim Fedorowicz. He's the Dodgers catcher tonight. And that's the first Los Angeles base runner. Right in the center of the plate. And he did with it what he's supposed to do. And then sent it right back at him. 
But he got ahead in the count, worked it to his favor. That brings up Nick Punto. Punto batted second last night and did so successfully. He was two for four, had a stolen base. Chris just threw over there and used his pretty much his a move to throw over and try to pick off Fedorowicz, but I wish he had saved that a move for a guy who might really run. Got the catcher over there. It's there's two outs and they're not really there's not a hit and run in order here. Don't show it to him. Save it for when you need it. Yeah, you can. I, I, I remember uh, uh, Joe people would always early in the game. He'd throw over it. Or throw over to first, and everybody on the bench would say, "He's got a better one." Everybody, he's got a better one. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and you don't want to see his good one. Right. You don't want to. You don't want to give that away and and help the the runners with the timing of your good move. Punto sprays one foul, two balls, two strikes. I had an interesting experience coaching first base for the the World Baseball Classic. You know now you got a stopwatch down there and you're timing everything how fast he is to the plate, how quick he is to first and guys want to know the times. I was kept kept forgetting to push the reset button <laughs> and Ryan Braun and look over how fast is he two and a half minutes. I think I messed up <laughs> right you're on your own. <laughs> but guys wanted to know you know how fast was he to the plate. Chris Madlin ties up Punto and has his first strikeout. Chris off to a good start. Rays try to break through in the second with Freeman, Johnson, and Brian McCann. Old getting their game faces on for the Braves and the Dodgers. We should have had Murph do that for rookie Hazen last year. Good point. Just, just paints right. names all over his face. I'll do that. <laughs> I'll do that. It'd be an honor to have Joe tattooed on my forehead. Don't you? Or Chris, whatever you prefer. All season long, Braves baseball on Fox Sports South is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. I 
back to that. Chris Capuano facing Freddie Freeman. Now you mentioned that big strikeout game that Capuano had against Atlanta while with the Mets. That was a gigantic turning point in that 2011 season. A lot of folks might have forgotten that Capuano pitched on the eve of what turned out to be Hurricane Irene in New York. Braves played that game, left town the next day, didn't play for a couple of games. And it was said that for whatever reason the club really lost its rhythm because they've been playing very good baseball up to that time. And with Capuano's performance, the Braves lost 20 of their final 30 games down the stretch. It's painful. And Freeman takes one over the outside corner, and Capuano has his second strikeout. What was the situation? What, did you fly in for that game? Was it? No, it was a great. It was a weekend series, I believe. It was a weekend. And but it, but it was just Friday, and we were waiting around Saturday, wanting to know if we were going to play Saturday night or not. Field line and that's out of play. Joe Vince is our producer, corrects my deficient memory. We went to the ballpark, played the game. A lot of the players and staff had already gone to the ballpark. They had to come back to the hotel, get their bags, go back to City Field. We played the game and then left right after the game to come back to Atlanta because of the bad forecast. The incoming hurricane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was all kind of strange psychologically and mentally for everybody. Sometimes things like that definitely can get you into a little bit of a funk, and that's what happened. Johnson serves one into shallow right field, a thing of beauty. That'll play all night, won't it? Yes, you bet. <laughs> like they say, hit it, hit it like it's pitched. That's four straight games for Chris Johnson. Who continues his good work against the Dodgers? Our Georgia Lottery hitting the jackpot his last 16 games against LA at 345 mark. Brian McCann looks for his first base hit of the series. Doro, it's a nice stop. One ball, no strikes. Brian looked good last night. Not a lot to show for it. A couple balls on the nose to the left center field. Mm -hmm. ball. By the way, I posed that question to both Brian and Jason today that we discussed last night about coming back from the DL and trying to be ready physically and mentally. And they both gave me the same answer separately that it is so easy to get back into the mental frame of mind to play because you're so fired up. And if nothing more, the fact that there is a big crowd, you are you get locked in right away. And Jason said when he was in Pawtucket in a rehab assignment, he said, when I stole second base one night, and went, went in head first. I knew I was good. I, knew I was good to go. And they both in separate answers said, no, it's, it's easy mentally to get right back into it because you can't wait to play again. And obviously the Braves couldn't wait to get them both back. Mm -hmm. It's really rather remarkable that for extended stretches of time, Hayward and McCann were out of the lineup for this club, yet the Braves were in first place. 
Slow roller hit toward Adrian Gonzalez. He will handle on the infield grass. And Johnson moves to second with two outs. See, he didn't even give in there. Three and zero. Oh. It was a not even his best fastball. I think it was a fastball. Probably something that he turned over a little bit. Target away. You know, I made a mistake up with it. But it's not his Sunday fastball. It's almost like a right. get over batting practice fastball, and Brian was out in front of it. Well, sometimes that's a tough pitch for hitters. Mm -hmm. You don't hear that phrase too often, but I I, I remember hearing that. What did you throw him? He goes, I threw him a BP fastball. Yeah. Just down in front, just a little bit. New set of signs for Capuano with Chris Johnson leading at second to Dan Ugla in the batter's box. Last night, I thought for you, you did a good job first time through the order of really keeping the guys off balance with his off speed stuff. He had three strikeouts through the first turn through the order. He also walked three, and then things started to catch up. They were making the Braves hitters were making some adjustments. We may see that happen again tonight. One ball, one strike for Dan Ugla. Braves opponents have scored first in nine straight games. This would be a great chance to end that streak. Well, he's hitting spots with it. Yes, off speed. He is. Man. We talked about that before we signed off last night, Chip, about how it would be nice to give Chris Medlin a couple of runs to work with because he's among the league leaders, if you will, in lowest run support. One point nine runs of support for Chris Medlin. A total of 15 runs. And it's hard to believe. Braves two and seven when he starts. You know, the challenge here for Dan Ugla will be getting even a pitch to hit with with BJ Upton struggles. Got to be surprised if there's anything on the plate for Dan Ugla here. They tried to tie him up inside. Now the count's full. And, and that 89 fastball looks like 99 when uh, you've been trying to focus on the off speed stuff. But it's given Dan a problem in his career. He's just 4 for 22 against Capuano. 22 at bats, 13 strikeouts. Well, I think he's thrown some change ups at 79. And when you go 89 to 79, 10 mm -hmm. miles an hour is a huge adjustment. Swing and a miss at 77. Third strikeout for Capuano. Johnson left standing at second base, and we still have no score.
Appreciation Day here, if I could talk here, at Turner Field. Over 100 military members were on the field pregame holding a giant flag across the outfield. And Chaplain Leslie Nelson got to throw out the very first pitch. And she is with me right now. What has today been like for you? Really amazing, actually. Yeah. Throwing out the first pitch, were you nervous? I was a, yes, I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> My hands were shaking. You seemed a little emotional afterwards, were you? It was, it's just really different having something like that happen. I've done a lot of different things as a military chaplain, but never thrown a pitch at a Braves game. Now, so. you were telling me a little bit about your role as a chaplain. Can you tell me, explain what you do to serve? I do a lot of different things. I have a lot of different roles. I work full-time um, with the Georgia National Guard as um, the directorate chaplain for the Joint and Family Services Directorate. And basically that means I take care of families full-time. I do a lot of counseling. I do a lot of classes, training on how to deal with deployment, how to reintegrate after you come back from deployment. I take, I, I do a few worship services occasionally, which is cool since I'm a chaplain. But I spend all of my time with soldiers and their families, service members and their families. And I get to be here with the PALS guys tonight, which is even better than throwing out the first pitch. Well, from everyone at Turner Field and especially all of us at Fox Sports South, we cannot thank you enough for all that you do for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chip? Thank you, Elizabeth. D. Gordon, I believe, was hit by that pitch. It was an 0-2 count, and he'll stand at first base. Well, he should have been out if his foot is still, yeah, his foot was out of the box when he got hit. Absolutely. Wow. So that doubly hurts Chris Medlin, the 0-2 pitch, and then the hit batsman, and a fast runner at first base for Chris Capuano. It's a tough call for the home plate ump. I, I could see that. Um, been nice. To, I guess the only other guy that could see this is the second base on, but it's a, it's a tough call. But I thought it was just a typical getting hit on the foot with a curveball, but definitely out of the box. Runner goes, and Capuano gets the bunt down very, very well. Medlin to first, a 1 3 sacrifice. Gordon in scoring position for the top of the Dodge order. It's kind of a weird. Play there. That was really strange. I agree with you, John. Thankfully, bunted it because he had the base stolen. It looked like if he lets him steal it, then he has a chance to bunt him to third. So, didn't he have an unbelievable jump? I'd have he to did. See. He yeah. was. He had a great jump. I don't think they had a play on him. And for Capuano, it's his first bunt of the year, first successful bunt. So maybe he missed a sign. Carl Crawford popped out to start the game. And takes low and inside ball one. That one found the mark. And ball one strike. And that's a good curveball. It's not his strikeout curveball to the back foot of a left-handed hitter, but it's good that he didn't try to overthrow that one. Or didn't overcook it. Got good break on it. Came over the top of it. Had a fastball inside edge. He's hitting that spot tonight. It's a couple of times he's already hit it on Crawford. His location so far. Mm -hmm. it looks like it's really pinpoint. The, the, the plate is seven baseballs wide. You don't want to be on those three baseballs in the middle. You want to be on those two baseballs on both sides of the plate. And so far, it looks like he's pretty well keyed in on, on the edges of the plate.
Well, again, outside of that five walk game against the Giants, his last time out, his command's been pretty good. Coming into the game tonight, in his last 34 innings, he had walked 13. That's a lot for him, but he'd given up 43 hits. He's getting hit a lot. So add, up, add that all together. There's a lot of base runners and working out of the stretch a lot. Two balls, two strikes for 31 year old Carl Crawford. See, even that pitch there is a good miss. You know, mm -hmm. It's a good miss. If you, don't, you don't miss inner, inner half to the middle of the plate, you miss off the plate. Set up this pitch here. I fly ball to straightaway right. Hayward sets up. Gordon fakes a tag. And two are out. We invite you to see Grammy winners and Georgia residents casting crowns live in concert here at Turner Field tomorrow after our game, part of the Braves' Faith Day. Field passes are still available available to see the show up close, and those field passes can be purchased at Braves.com/concerts right now. Here's Matt Kemp. He rolled out to short. Gordon's going to try to steal third. McCann's throw gets it. Look at Kemp. Kemp upset about that because he wanted to drive him in. What a throw by Brian. We saw some questionable base running in Arizona. We see a questionable Dodger decision in the third, and it helps keep the game scoreless. out of a chance for a big inning with Paul Goldschmidt up. Brian McCann just threw out D. Gordon with Matt Kemp in the box. Perfect pitch to throw on to up and into the right handed hitter. So Brian's going that way made a great throw. Poor decision with Matt Kemp. Then Gonzalez to follow wow. if if Kemp reaches with two outs. That was a bad play and the Braves thank D. Gordon. In that Arizona game, Freddie Gonzalez told us afterward, Joe, that he thought that was the biggest play in the game. Atlanta led at the time 3 1. And then had a big inning next time up and blew out the Diamondbacks. 
Well, it's funny how things work out. He should have been called out when he got hit by that pitch, so it all worked out okay. Yeah, you know? that's true. But you never steal third with two outs with your number three and four hitter coming up no. unless you know you're going to be safe, and then you don't steal it as yeah. well. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just, uh, you just come back to the dugout the next inning and go, boy, I think I could have gotten a third base there. I think I could have gotten a third yeah, yeah. I think he was the first guy out of the dugout with his glove, too. Yeah. I don't think he wanted to go in that dugout. I think Don Manley probably would have let him know something, but we'll take it. Word needs to be passed through the Braves dugout about change up, change up. Once in a while, a fastball, change up, change up. And start trying to think about right center field for these right handed hitters. That's over the inside corner and no argument from Upton. See, he's pitching backwards with all this. He's getting ahead with the off speed because he's locating that change up so well. And then he's throwing that 89 mile an hour fastball two seamer in there for the strikeout, as he does here. Starts messing with your head a little bit. You start thinking too much. You, like, you got to simplify it, Joe. Like you said, look away, drive the ball to right. If he makes a mistake, you'll hit it. But you can react to his fastballs. A pitcher like him, not a lot. As I said before, there's not a lot of guys you can do that. Look the other way and react in. Did you ever face Randy Jones with the Padres? Yes, I did, and I hated it. Remember, <laughs> remember what a good changeup he yes. had? And unlike today's player, I think players from your era were much more willing to move in the box on a guy like that, move up in the box, or crowd the plate, take something away from him. Hitters today just don't do that. Absolutely. Uh, with a guy like him, I, I would... And I didn't move that much, but with him, if you didn't move up a foot and on the plate, he would kill you away. And then you would just dare him to throw it in if he threw it in, but he still didn't do it. And he kept, he kept, you know, nibbling away and away. But uh, yes, absolutely, you, you have to make an adjustment on a few guys. You had to move in that box. Madlin skies one into shallow center. Kemp diving try. Can't get it. Braves have two bloop singles tonight. And Medlin's first base hit of the year. Tom Glavin, I don't know if he's watching the Braves or his Boston Bruins tonight. Might be a toss-up there. But I know if he's watching this game, he is... High five and Chris Medlin from afar for his first hit. One for 14 now. <laughs> Here's Andrelton. Still want to get on that back line of the batter's box, dig in, and you're playing into a change-up pitcher's. It's, it's a good hand. point, Joe. Move up at least a foot. Bouncing ball left side, underhanded shovel to second, and the throw to first in time for a double play. Punto to Schumacher to Gonzalez, and the Braves out of luck in the bottom half of the third inning. Still no score.
today from the Braves bullpen. Eric O'Flaherty will undergo surgery sometime too soon. He's got a torn ligament in his elbow. General Manager Frank Wren said this is a big loss for the bullpen. It's a big hit. I mean, we, you know, we've uh, kind of hung our hat on those three guys at the back end, which is Kimbrell, Venters, and, and O'Flaherty the last three or four years, and, and they've done a great job for us. So uh, this one we're going to have to figure out how we finish off games and, um, you know, Avalon has done a great job, so you know he's going to get more responsibility. We'll get Jordan Walden back in the next week. He's doing better, uh, and he's pitched. He's closed out games for the Angels and pitched in important situations. So we're going to have to regroup a little bit, but I think we have uh, people that can fill that role. So guys, not only do you lose one of the best setup men in baseball, but you may lose that right-left-right right option. Anyone who questions just how important that is can ask Don Mattingly what he had to face last night with only a lefty available to face Justin Upton. And Tom, I think that you, you can obviously see the dejection and the disappointment in the face of Frank Wren, too, uh, when he's talking to you about O'Flaherty, because that is a big loss. I believe I read a, a note somewhere today that Kimbrell and O'Flaherty had better ERAs than Mariano Rivera. That's it. Those are the top three guys. As Matt Kemp. Skies one toward right field. Jason Hayward back a couple of steps and makes the play. I, I don't know if we could find this out. Might have to put Gretchen on it. But I wonder how many games Craig Kimbrell's pitched where O'Flaherty didn't pitch the inning in front of him. That's a good you know, question. There, there might have been some games where the Braves rallied, took the lead in the eighth, and then Kimbrell finished it in the ninth. There, that's a real possibility. But just about every time Kimbrell finishes a ball game. Eric pitched the eighth inning. Yeah, a couple of years ago it was Venters mm -hmm. in the eighth, and then Johnny got hurt, and then Eric stepped up. That's right to that frame. But yeah, that's that's an excellent point. But to Dale's point too, your organization is going to have to pick up the slack, and I think we're all very very surprised and pleasantly so at the job Luis Avilan has mm -hmm. done in filling in for Johnny Venters. Absolutely. Adrian Gonzalez yanks that one a mile down the right field line foul. One ball, one strike. That's the thing. This guy crosses you up on, on how he can turn on the ball when he wants to. Just as an aside, we're talking about the Deke Gordon's steal and everything with Kemp up. I think I was referring to to Kemp and Gonzalez as the three-four hitter tonight. They're hitting two and three. For those of you who are keeping score at home, I completely messed you up. I apologize. Downstairs. We were with you. We knew what you meant. Two balls <laughs> and a strike. <laughs> Two, three, three, four. Somewhere in there. Either way. Good, good, good hitter. Play. Good yeah, hitters. There you go. <laughs> They're good hitters. Nice there. Adrian Gonzalez, the subject of our AT&T Universe trivia question. Since 2007, he has a 297 batting average, third best in among Major League first basemen who has the highest batting average with a minimum of 2,000 plate appearances. Goodness, that's a lot. Good mark to share a fit there. Yep. Uh, here's a question. Does he have to be a current first baseman? So Miguel Cabrera would not apply. He did play first for the Tigers, but now plays third base with Prince Fielder on the other side of the diamond. Albert Pujols. A good guess. Joey Votto. Mm -hmm. That's who I like if it's good enough. A lot of choices. Two balls, two strikes. For those of you following Dale Murphy on Twitter, go ahead and give him the answer. Because Joe and I need the help. On our trivia question tonight. Full count pitch for Adrian Gonzalez. 
I'll be checking it out. No, I just I figure it's got to be pool holes. Yep. I mean, it'd be like betting against Orb, the horse race. How could you go wrong? Yeah, right? good point. Favorite <laughs> never loses. <laughs> Especially three to five. Yeah. So no triple crown this year. Horse racing, tenth pitch of the at bat. Adrian Gonzalez is taken low. He earned a walk. First one of those for Chris tonight. He's also hit a pan. One on one out. Time for our Home Depot tools from the dugout, and that applies to the Braves pitchers at home. Third in ERA in the major leagues, third in starters ERA. First in walks per nine innings and in strikeouts per nine innings. That's pretty good work right there in that walks to strikeout ratio and the record 10 and 5, fourth breath. Fourth best overall. Andre Eth here flying out his first time up. And he takes a knee high strike. Ethier was not born and raised a Dodger. He was originally an Oakland Athletic. And then after the 2005 season, the Dodgers traded Milton Bradley and Antonio Perez to the A's for Andre Ethier. Advantage Dodgers. Hundred thirty two lifetime homers in a Dodger uniform for Andre Ethier, including three this year. He's got really good hands in his swing, strong hands. I had some pretty good hands too with the bat and the glove. Fly ball center right at BJ. He's got it two out. I liked what he did there, Dale. Uh, talking about BJ, it was one of those line drives at him. He wasn't sure if it was going to be over his head or in front of him. But what he did was he, he turned sideways. Watch this. Turned sideways. Now he can cross over either way. He can cross over and go back. He can use a crossover step and come in if he has to. Until he has a chance to read it, and as it turned out, right at him. Yeah, good in, instinctive move when you're, you're when you got a little question in your mind, not sure what to do. You freeze and turning sideways does help to give you a little different perspective sometimes too. But he's ready to go either way. Mm -hmm. Still staying straight up, can't go in or back as quickly. And he hit that ball pretty well, but it was good location. Whoa, good location. That was one of Joe's keys. Chris has to hit his spots. And, and he's doing that with his, his changeup, I think, better tonight than we've seen him yes. maybe since that win. Really like the way he's working tonight. That's downstairs. Two balls and a strike. And it's unfair to say that uh, he hasn't pitched well since he beat Miami three to two and went seven innings and gave up one unearned run. That really hasn't been the case. He gave up two runs in seven innings against Kansas City, got no decision. And just two starts ago in Cincinnati, he was ready to be the winner until the home runs in the ninth off Kimbrell beat the Braves. He gave up two runs in seven innings that night. So Medlin, a case where you look at his record and you say he's having a bad year. You look at his ERA and his other numbers, you say, they're a little higher than last year, but certainly not worthy of a guy pitching to a one and five mark. That's lined over third and fair. Schumacher kisses the chalk down the left field line. And the ball gets away from Justin up to the in the corner. And that's going to bring Gonzalez home and he'll score standing up. So the Dodgers get a break and they've scored first. 
I'm not sure what happened in the corner. We couldn't see the deep corner here. But Schumacher placed this perfectly down the line. And I believe Tim Wallach was going to hold Gonzalez at third base until that happened. That might be an error. Yeah, Justin did a good job of getting to the ball. But that, that base hit by Schumacher, too, I think that's a situation there where he might have been looking off speed three and one, but you can react to that fastball. Might be the, the way the Braves need to approach Capuano. So that's a double all the way. And the error does allow Gonzalez to score, so no RBI for Schumacher. So Medlin's first walk comes home to roost. And Tim Fedorowicz, the catcher already with a hit, stands in behind in the count of one two. And it keeps that streak going, right? Nine in a row now the ten. This was ten. This was ten tonight. Braves fall have fallen behind. That's not a good trend. No. I want to keep testing that. A lot of averages on that one. But it's especially grating on a, a pitcher who has been scuffling to try to get a W, which might, as good as he's pitching tonight, is sharp as he is with his command he might all of a sudden try to be too sharp and make a mistake knowing he's already behind. Fedoro it's fortunate that didn't hit him. Instead it's fouled away to the right side. One ball two strikes. Here's our Academy Sports and Outdoor Leaderboard. Chris Medlin, Clayton Kershaw have some things to talk about. Two Miami pitchers on there too. They can certainly relate. Nolasco and Slowey. Swing and a miss on a ball in the dirt. And McCann makes the throw to first and that retires the side. Aaron left scores Gonzalez to give Los Angeles a one nothing lead. Blippy game summary you see the Dodgers have scored first that's 10 straight games Atlanta has allowed the other team to get on the scoreboard first however Atlanta ought to have a first run but Matt Kemp had other ideas and that's the subject of our Coors Light freeze cam 
off the bat of Jason Hayward in the first inning. Great leap, timed it perfectly. Looked like he saved a home run. Great play by Matt Kemp. We've got a tip of the cap from Jason Hayward. That's the Coors Light Breeze Cam brought to you by Frostproof Coors Light. I love the fact that Jason's hitting the ball the other way. Did that last night for his first hit. Ball tailing away from Kemp here tonight. And we're one batter into the second time through the order. We'll see what the players' adjustments are against Capuano, if any. That's right there for a called strike. Thomas at first vacuums that up and wins the race to the first base bag. One away in the Braves fourth. Here's Justin. There's been a bellwether performer for the Braves this year. Offensively, Justin Upton has been that guy. Yeah, the 23 wins for Atlanta this year. Upton's hitting 345 with 13 of his home runs. And Braves losses, Upton hitting 193. With one homer and 13 and three driven in. Grand slam last night, five RBIs is up to 28. And a fly ball shallow right. Ethier is under it and has it two down. Hip hop pioneers run DMC perform live at Turner Field post game Saturday, June 1st. Murph, that's part of the Braves summer concert series presented by Coca Cola and Delta. Get your tickets to see this legendary group at Braves.com slash tickets or call 800 745 3000. Should have had you read that promotion, <laughs> by the way. After did such a great job with OAR last year. And BOB. And BOB, yes. Yeah. I would have changed that to run DM3. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Run DM3. I like it. That's my rap group. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes. That caught a corner for Freddie Freeman. Slow, slower, slowest for <laughs> Capuano, isn't it? Well, you're right, and I, I like that observation, Joe, about moving around in the box. Just it's it's something that is not around that much anymore. Just trying to take something away from him. Make him what we think. What was that story you shared back in the day with uh, Steve Garvey? Yeah. I don't know if we can get through it with two outs here, but let's see what this pitch is. Got time. We had a meeting before a, a game with Steve 
Jones, with Randy Jones and it was pitches a lot like yeah you know, very much like this Walter, Walter Alston told everybody in the line I want you to move up in the box or move up on the plate everybody one guy did Steve Garvey he got three hits and we lost because nobody else moved and Jones was able to dictate however he wanted except everybody except Garvey Gordon at short takes care of Freddie Freeman Capuano giving the Braves trouble in game two of the series he bats third and fifth and leads one nothing. Brought you in part by Blimpy, by the Georgia Lottery, by the Home Depot, and by Toyota. Dodgers one, Braves nothing. We head to the fifth inning tonight. Nice warm night for a game in Atlanta. Knock on wood, the rain has stayed away. Chris Medlin. He's pitched very effective baseball. A one out walk came home after Schumacher doubled and Justin Upton misplayed a ball in the corner. And with one pitch, he gets Nick Punto to pop into shallow left. Justin calls off Simmons. Good communication. Four out number one. A tough time of night, too. Fox Sports South is bringing you the most coverage of the ACC baseball tournament. Don't miss all the action live from Durham, North Carolina, as top teams square off for the conference title. The ACC baseball tournament starts Wednesday at 11 a.m. on Fox Sports South. Off all those strikes for D. Gordon. Good enough, two and one. Same spot, same call. Chris got to be happy the way he's throwing the ball right now. He is hitting those spots. But 
but missed with Gordon. That's a one out walk. I like to put those fast runners on base, especially to give the pitchers a chance to make a good out and move a runner up, which is what Capuano did last time up. All season long, Braves baseball on Fox Sports South is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. It was an odd play the last time Capuano hit. Gordon got a great jump, looked like he was going to steal second. Capuano laid down the bunt. And as you guys had said, if he had taken, Gordon probably would have been at second base, and then Capuano could have bunted him to third. Somebody missed a sign. That's low, one ball, no strikes. Capuano was an all star in 2006. That was the season after he had been an 18 game winner with Milwaukee. Maybe the most remarkable thing about this man is two Tommy John surgeries. Had it in 2002 and then again in 2008. The 08 surgery cost him two full major league seasons. There's the bunt. And Medlin's the man that makes the play. Good sacrifice. Gordon at second, two outs, and Carl Crawford's coming up. Well, that is a, a, a good story for Capuano, especially going to uh, Johnny Venters, who will have his second. To, to hear the number of guys that have that had two and come back really well is encouraging. It's been done, and it's been done very well. Israel Housing, I think, is one we talked about the mm -hmm. other night. And we don't know what the surgical fate, if there is one, for Eric O'Flaherty. He is going to try to see Dr. Andrews sometime next week, as Frank Wren said earlier, waiting to get an appointment to check out his left elbow. But after an MRI today, it was discovered that Eric O'Flaherty does have a tear in his left pitching elbow. And it's not likely to have finished for this year. No balls and a strike for Crawford. Bottom of the hour. Top of the fifth. And the count now one and one. He did. You bet he did. Crawford didn't like that call by Hunter Wendelstead. And he's behind one and two. Didn't look like a Hunter liked his reaction to his call. Back to the mound on a big hop, and Medlin is able to pitch around a one out fifth inning walk. Chris Johnson, Brian McCann, and Dan Ugler coming up. That's your Delta Airlines on deck trio. The Braves down 1 0.
nothing. Time for tonight's cold hard fact brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. Beat a left handed starter last night to improve the record to 10 and 5. And the most home runs against left handed starters as well. Only two hits tonight, though, off of Capuano, but the Dodgers only have two hits off Medlin. But they have an unearned run. Chris's numbers good against Capuano, too. We showed you his good work against the Dodgers. He's 5 for 16 now off Capuano with a homer. Something off speed starts another at bat. And that was a 73 mile an hour curveball. 73. They have to change this man's last name to call him Crafty Mono. <laughs> Pretty good. Only 53 pitches for the first four innings. And he's way ahead of Chris tonight. Is that economical? Phi Beta Kappa in economics. The reason I was asking. At Duke. Originally drafted by the Diamondbacks. He went to Milwaukee in the Richie Sexton deal. We showed you his work with the Mets now wearing Dodgers colors. He had not pitched well until his last start against Miami at home. He pitched into the seventh inning, five hits, one run, one walk, seven strikeouts at that. Back up the middle, diving play at second. Schumacher can't take away a hit from Johnson. Chris two for two and a good strike to the Braves fifth. Well, that's a nice play by Schumacher made a nice play last night. Got rid of it. Really quickly this time he had to dive so. He still got rid of it really well. Good hustle by Chris Johnson he can smell that hit. That gets you down there a little bit quicker when you can. Have a chance of getting the base hit good start. The man on first. Wouldn't you know it? Capuano throws an 88 mile an hour fastball right there. And Brian took it for a strike. Yeah, but there's a good place. Uh, he's hitting his spots. He's getting the counts in his favor. Yeah, you got to give him a little credit. I, I talked about him going from 79 to 89, and the difference that is in that at bat to Chris Johnson went from 73 to 90. That's. Big, tough to adjust to. Big jump, and if you're getting good location, that's going to be a, a tough adjustment. I don't think you see that very often. It's a 17 mile an hour difference. He he reminds me, he's six three, same height, two fifteen, a little lighter, but he reminds me of John Smoltz across the shoulders and how. Broad shoulder John was. This guy looks the same way. One ball, one strike for BMAC. Now three and one, but that's that's what uh, this this count thing is all about. Brian's ahead two and one, got a change up, borderline pitch, but because it was two and one, he didn't have to mess with it. He's behind in the count. He may be prone to swing at that just to protect. And now three and one. Let's see if Capuano continues to pitch backwards here and throw something off speed. 
Shift on for the Dodger defense. And Brian bounces right into it. They'll get the force at second. As Johnson's retired for out number one. Brian McCann at first for Dan Ugla. Out of the swing he had last night, he had that. If he put a couple of those swings that he had last night, he got a couple of fastballs to hit, and he's just rolled a little too quick to yeah. Trying to pull him. Yep. High fly ball, right center. Kemp takes over and makes the catch in front of Andre Eth here. Smart of Ethier though to go over there nearby because of the way the sky is right now. There's no guarantee that he's going to be able to track it all the way. That will not count. Like Ugla got a decent pitch to hit there too, around the knees and had a lot of the plate. Yes, he did. A little frustrated after that pitch. You can see it. Got a pitch to hit. Good swing there. Strike one for BJ. Who took the fastball. And was called out on strikes in the Braves third. Fastball right there, and Dan upset that he got under it. In, in hindsight, but it, it, it looking at that pitch to Dan Ugla, that's the pitch you got to be looking for off of Capuano. If you get a fastball early in the count, it's going to be there. You're not going to get a fastball in until later in the count, and it's on, it's going to be way off the plate anyway. He'll throw you a fastball there early in the count. Dan just pulled off a little bit. If he could look for it, drive it to right center, you have a good chance. BJ was in this count earlier tonight and was it looked like he was probably looking middle of the plate away and then Papuano buzzed him on the inside corner and got a call third. And he went away and Upton was down on strikes. That's five strikeouts for Chris Capuano. He enjoys a one run lead. Atlanta Braves baseball is brought to you in part by Georgia Power, by Ram Trucks, by Crown Royal, and by AT&T. One nothing Dodgers. We head to the sixth inning. 
Joe Murphy and Chip with you from Turner Field. Let's get back to our AT&T U-verse trivia question with Adrian Gonzalez coming up for Los Angeles. Since 2007, he has the third best batting average among Major League first basemen. His mark, 297. Who has the best batting average among Major League first basemen since 07 with a minimum of 2,000 plate appearances? I got to stick with Pujols. Okay. The first guy that came to my mind was Joey Votto. Joey Votto? I'm going to say Paul Canerco. Are we right? Way to go, Murph. Oh, my word. Way to On go. On the board. Don't expect me to do that now. again. You're Ever. A, you're a two time. <laughs> I, saw the, I saw the steam coming out of your ears. We're proud of you. You're a two time MVP, Murph. Keep it up. Good job tonight. Joey, well, follow the answer. Well, I wasn't a Phi Beta Kappa, but I, I did get straight A's in high school. Did I already tell you that? Did no. I, no. Yeah. Go but, ahead. We got a whole yeah. inning. Yeah, yeah no, that. my B's were a little crooked. <laughs> but my, <laughs> my A's were <laughs> got them just right. <laughs> oh, nice. boy. That's smolty territory right there. Yeah. <laughs> You know he's watching tonight. Kemp swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes. Feel free to use that one, Smolty. Yeah. Well, you know he's watching because they all had to come out here for a production meeting today, and they don't even work till tomorrow. Kemp swings and misses. Boy, the Braves have really had his number, haven't they? Kemp had a 14-game hitting streak at the start of this series. He had an 0 for last night, and he's 0 for 3 tonight. Good change up, great spot. Chris is sharp tonight, yes, great sign. Is. Yes, he is. Good location there, good movement. Kemp 0 for his last 21 at Turner Field. Adrian Gonzalez was originally a Florida Marlin. Marlins drafted him in the first round of the 2000 draft. He was the number one overall pick. The Marlins traded him to Texas for Ugeth Urbina in July of 2003. And Urbina helped take the Marlins to the World Series. And the Padres got Gonzalez for Adam Eaton. That was in 2006. As he hits this one off the end of the bat into shallow right, Hayward's got that. It's traded to Boston for Anthony Rizzo, who's now the Cubs' first baseman. And then the giant mega deal between the Dodgers and Red Sox last year. Who did the Dodgers trade to Boston in that deal? Do you have that? James Loney, Yvonne De Jesus, right handed pitcher Alan Webster, right handed pitcher Ruby De La Rosa, and first baseman outfielder Jerry Sands. We saw Jerry Sands make his big league debut mm -hmm. out of Los Angeles. I think De La Rosa pitched against the Gwinnett Braves the other night. Did he? Pawtucket, yeah. I don't think De Jesus is in the Red Sox organization anymore. He might be. And James Loney is in Tampa, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And for Boston, that was as much salary relief Hazel, as anything else. Yeah. yeah, they got Crawford's contract off the books, Josh Beckett's, Gonzalez's, and Nick Punto's. And by the way, the Boston Red Sox, yeah. a game behind the Yankees. Yeah, eight games over 500. What a turnaround for them. Two quick strikes for Andre Ethier. And Medlin is really sizzling now. A couple of strikeouts in the sixth inning. He has four in total. He'll lead things off for Atlanta. And he's down only one nothing.
Time for our Volkswagen pitching performance, and you could put a performances on this one because both guys are dealing and both are dealing with change ups primarily. Although Capuano, a couple of his strikeouts have been on that pitch fastball two seamer that caught the inside corner. For Chris Medlin, guys, I think he's had his best change up tonight of any of his starts all year. Good stuff for him. He just recorded back to or two strikeouts in the sixth inning to give him four on the night. And only five hits total in the ball game allowed by either side. Well, great location, great movement, and great misses. Mm -hmm. You know, your misses have to be well placed as well. I think he's bounced his curveball. He's he hit beat Gordon with it. Mm -hmm. that, those are not bad things. Bla bad places to throw your curveball every once in a while. It's okay to bounce it. At least you're going to miss. You're missing too low, but you're not going to make a mistake hanging it. He's had good misses tonight as well. Chris has one of the Braves three hits in the game. He bounces this one out toward D. Gordon at short. And there's your first out. And that has had the leadoff man on just one time. That was last inning. Chris Johnson legging out an infield hit. And Capuano has been in complete command. And he's pitched well in this ballpark. 2 0 in his career here at Turner Field, a 334 ERA. And I remember. Uh, John Smoltz telling me about how much he loved pitching in Montreal with that plexiglass right behind home plate. He said it felt like you were right on top of the hitter. Plus you got to watch yourself pitch. <laughs> so he loved <laughs> pitching there. And I think uh, the same might be said for Capuano here. He feels comfortable at Turner Field. And his results show. Well there's just something isn't it. As a hitter as well there's just some ballparks you see things you feel comfortable whatever it is. I used to go to Wrigley Field and feel like the pitcher was 40 feet away. Simmons swings from his heels and pops one up towards second. And two outs. You go to some other ballparks, you feel like you see it really well and you just had success in the past. Psychologically, it's a, it's a big deal. As a hitter, John Spoltz out. How much he loved to pitch in the old ballpark in, in Montreal. He's talking about Olympic Stadium. Mm -hmm. Man, that was a, not a fun place to hit. Just did not like the visual he had there. Backdrop was weird. That you had a lot of <laughs> horns going. Boo boo Zalas, is that what they're called? Yeah. <laughs> Remember when pitchers would throw over trying to pick off guys at first base and put the chickens on the scoreboard? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Good days. Always had a tough club there, though. And they had good ball players there. And of course, was it a trip to Montreal unless you could see you be? Great all time mascots. Two balls and a strike. In the air to center. Kemp broke back. Now comes in on a full sprint and gets there to retire the side. Three up, three down for Atlanta in the sixth. One nothing, Los Angeles.
nothing. Braves could have had a run in the first inning, but Matt Kemp spoiled the fun. Yeah, he did. Really nice timing by Matt Kemp, unfortunately. And a little tough play here. A Schumacher hitting the ball down the line. In retrospect, I'm sure Justin Upton is saying, with Gonzalez on first, I don't have to go in there too fast, make sure I catch it because he's not going to score anyway. Unfortunately, took his eye off a little bit coming up too yeah. quick, and Gonzalez ended up scoring. Yeah, I didn't see that the first time around, but you're right, Murph. He, he looked up before he had it in his glove when he went to that backhand. Yeah, it took me this long to think of it, but that's part of playing the outfield is when you're, you're you got to know your base runners. You got to think of, as he's going into the corner, he's got to know it's not D. Gordon on first. Yeah. All I got to do is catch this ball. He's not scoring. With D. Gordon, you got to, you know, or someone who can run, you got to get rid of it a little bit quicker. But unfortunately, it's not that easy of a play. Uh, but sometimes you got to go into that corner with a little bit of caution. It's better than going in there too hot, trying to be too quick. So that was our Crown Royal game summary. As an unearned run tallied against Chris Medlin tonight. Upton's fourth error in the Atlanta outfield this year. And the only error by either club so far tonight. Schumacher goes to work first. Balls and a strike. Chris Medlin looks really comfortable. I remember one of the starts early in the season. He said he was thinking out there, working on stuff, and finally I said, you know, I can't work on stuff out there. It doesn't look like he's got anything on his mind except picking up Brian McCann and throwing strikes. Which he has done all night long. He gets Schumacher. And that's out number one. Delta Airlines, proud sponsor of your Atlanta Braves. Have a good crowd here tonight for game two of the series. We had 43,000 here last night for the Braves, Dodgers, and post game fireworks. We got close to that tonight, don't we? Pretty good shot. Mm -hmm. Here's Tim Fedorovich. First pitch swing and a fly ball deep center. The ballpark will hold that one. BJ Upton a step onto the track. Well, hitting and pitching is. is Similar in that respect, isn't it, Joe? Mentally, when when you're pitching well, you don't you, you get the sign. You're not thinking. You just kind of get the sign. You pick up your target. You throw hits the same way. Kind of, you don't you don't think too much. You don't have time. You can't react and think about where your hands are, where your feet are. You got to see it and hit it. A clearer mind is better, both hitting and pitching. It looks like, again, Chris is is just very comfortable. Not a lot of effort out there. Throwing it, and I think it all comes from confidence. Absolutely, you know, yeah. You know, as a hitter, when you're going good and you feel like, hey, just you throw it, and I'll hit it. You know, I just want to see it out of your hand. You don't have to think about anything else. And I think that's uh, a lot of the same stuff for pitchers, like you're talking about. That I know I can make a good pitch here now because I've been doing it all night. Right, and you're not afraid to get behind. You're yeah. not, you're not afraid of anything. Right. When you're hit when you're hitting well you're not afraid of, of missing a pitch because you know you're going to hit the next one. And I like the, the phrase that people use a lot as far as athletics is concerned is being in the zone. Someone described it once as 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 concentrating without thinking. I like that. You know you're you just see everything you notice everything but you don't have to overthink it. Oh yeah just missed. Pitch number 100 Medlin thought it was. Good enough to end the at bat to Nick Punto. 
Jerry Lane's been very generous to both pitchers. Uh, east and west on those corners tonight. But not that one. Hey, yeah, yeah. Looks that one inside. Two and two. Not the two pitches that have been closer to together in the same spot. Yes. But again, those those are those are great misses. Mm -hmm. There's been a few games where Chris has missed on the plate and then it gets hit. Exactly right. Those are good misses. And in the bigger picture, guys, with the news of the day today, one of our keys was get your starter at least seven innings if you can. And Chris one strike away from doing just that. This spot in the batting order not due up next inning. You hope he gets up. He's due up seventh, but he might be able to go another inning since he just crossed over 100. And after getting ahead 0 and 2, now it's full to Nick Punto. Make a good pitch here, get the out, then you've got 8 9 1 up next inning. Ball four. Terrific at bat by Punto. The umpires in the crowd letting Jerry Lane hear it. As Medlin just missed shaving off the inside corner on back to back pitches to go from 0 and 2 to 2 and 2. Little breather here for it from this trip by Roger McDowell. So I'll lay visit. We'll tell you about Georgia Power Energy tip number one. Ways to make your home more energy efficient with Georgia Power's online energy checkup. It's free and takes less than 15 minutes to complete. Energy tip number one Tyler Pastor Nicky, who continues to hit well at Gwinnett. Last I heard, he was still hitting 300. Good for Tyler. Let's see if Chris can retire Gordon here. He's hit him with a pitch and he's walked in. Q shot. That ball is foul. That is a foul ball. Hunter Wendell's step. It's not Hunter's call. He's the man that was yeah, waving his not. arms. It's not. And that's exactly what Don Mattingly's right. coming to ask is did Jerry Lane see that ball? And Jerry Lane said hey, the ball was foul and he ruled it that way too. Let's see if that's the case. Close. Yeah. But that's Jerry Lane's call until the ball gets to the bag. And Don Manley's probably trying to say, how could you see it with Chris Johnson in front of it? Mm -hmm. Strike one to D. Gordon. I don't know how Chris Johnson would have thrown out D. Gordon. There. Brave start play tonight, a half game in front of the Nationals. They're in San Diego tonight. And the Padres have scored an early run. They lead Washington 1 0 in the second inning. Nationals got a big victory last night. Rafael Soriano blew a save. They came back and won an extra innings. I didn't know this stat, but the Washington Nationals were the last team in the National League with a pinch hit RBI until last night. There's a strike to Gordon. One ball, two strikes. And they've got a couple of good guys off the bench too, and Tyler Moore, Chad Tracy. Right now, Adam LaRoche is carrying Washington. He's got a 14 game hit streak. 
Close play and just back. If you were with us when we were doing a game in Phoenix the other night, there were a lot of close plays at first base, and John Hirschbeck was back at the edge of the grass with a runner at first. Alan Porter's right there, got his nose right in that play. Good call, right on top of it. One oh. ball, two strikes. What was he doing? He was down the line, yeah. back on the grass. Yeah, he was way back behind the base, right at the edge of the grass, even with a runner at first. And there were some pickoff moves that he had to make a call on from that area. And John's a good umpire, but he was yeah. way off with some out, out of position. Edlin's thrown a season high 111 pitches. It's taken in about 10 of those. The last hitter or two, last two hitters. Swing and a miss. Medlin strikes out D. Gordon. Five strikeouts for Chris. And as we head to the seventh inning stretch, the big bats are coming up for Atlanta. Up to Freeman and Chris Johnson. Down one nothing to the Dodgers. Day as the Braves and Dodgers meet in game two. Always great to see our heroes come home. And I hope if you're at the ballpark this weekend and you see a member of our military, pat him on the back, wish them well, and say, job well done. Yeah, what a what a opening today. I, this is the first time I've been at the ballpark where I saw the, the flag and members of our forces here and, and the, the first pitch. 
I like it too when the players go out and yeah. stand in between all the that servicemen was, and women. That's cool. That was awesome. So the stars and stripes flying proudly above the ballpark in the stands as well. As the Braves get set to come up in their half of the seventh inning. The stars have been on the mound tonight. Neither Chris Capuano nor Chris Medlin have given up an earned run. Unfortunately, Medlin trails 1 0. Capuano up to his old tricks against the Braves. He's 2 0 in this ballpark. And he's into the seventh inning at 73 pitches and only three hits. Just the right hand. He's done that a lot with Capuano tonight. The ball is in a strike. And once again gets ahead in the count. His pitch count very manageable. And with the troubles the Dodgers have had in their bullpen, one would think Don Mattingly will let Capuano go as long as he can tonight. Braves roughed up their relief core last night. And Capuano spears one at the base of the mound. He takes care of Justin, one away in the Atlanta seventh. Good as the top three hitters were for Atlanta last night. So far, Capuano's held them to 0 for 9 combined tonight in game two. After the Dodgers leave town, the Twins come a calling Monday through Wednesday here at Turner Field. Take advantage of the Coca-Cola two for $30 Tuesday ticket special. And take off early for the Braves business fan special on Wednesday. Visit Braves.com slash tickets for more info. This game right now reeks of the first two games in Arizona. Braves beat a left hander Wade Miley 10 to 1 had 13 hits. The next night Patrick Corbin threw a four hit shutout combined with his bullpen. Last night the Braves really were on a mission offensively eight runs nine hits tonight. Another lefty they're not generating much. Well, you're right so far it reeks is the word so mm -hmm. far but. Talking about as, as well as Chris Medlin is, as pitch Capuano has been right on the money with his location. Well, he hasn't struck out an inordinate number of hitters. He has five strikeouts in the game, just three hits. One very interesting trend for this Braves ball club offensively in the first 41 games. Freeman scalds one to short. Gordon no had him play beautifully. Two out. And the Braves do not hit a home run. They've won one game this year. One. And one in 14. That was uh, that was a good piece of hitting there by Freddie though. Ahead in the count. Looked like he was trying to go the other way, but they just had him positioned perfectly. A little bit of an inside out stroke. Hit it hard, but you can see Gordon cheated up the middle some right there for it. Yeah, good positioning by D. Gordon. Freddy's look really comfortable though. Had, had, had uh, base hit last night. Did he have three walks as well, or something like that? I think he just just looks good seeing the ball well. Three walks. Three walks and an RBI hit for Freeman last night. But 0 for three in game two tonight. This is Chris Johnson. Braves have three hits. Chris has two of them. Chris Medlin has the other. Corey Guerin is still throwing in the Braves pin chip. You see if Medlin goes back out. I Chris for 112, 113 pitches. <laughs> and the bullpen door it's just amazingly like magic flies open.
Two balls, one strike. Chris Johnson has three hits. It's one of the few mistakes he's made all night. Looked like a pitch that was up. He hadn't hardly made any pitches above the waist. There was one. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's thrown that pitch all night. I would find him hanging one to Brian McCann. Brian, Brian has got a couple decent pitches to hit, just been a little bit quick. See if he can make an adjustment here and drive that ball up the other way. And if he makes a mistake in, then Brian's plenty quick enough. Pena's pinch running at first base. And a bouncing ball right to Adrian Gonzalez. And that retires the side. We are through seven in Atlanta. The Dodgers still lead one nothing. An unearned run is the difference in game two tonight, and the night is over for Chris Medlin. Just good ball game, real good ball game. Retired 10 of the last 12 he faced. The only two that reached were one walks. Last hit he allowed was the double by Schumacher back in the fourth inning. So Corey Guerin, the first man to answer our AT&T call to the bullpen. As we were talking earlier with Eric O'Flaherty out with an elbow injury now the responsibilities for guys in the bullpen become even more important and you saw Corey's numbers feel awfully good about the way he's pitched and here he is in the eighth. I think especially with um, I'll say the inexperience I know Corey's been up a couple of times over the last two years. Several times of the last two years, but the inexperience between he and Rasmus, even Avilon to some extent. I mean, these guys got to be ready just to pitch just about anywhere, anytime. Yeah. Capuano stays in the game and pops one into shallow center. BJ Upton comes on. And here it gets the first man in the Dodger eighth. I think Anthony Barbaro is going to be the designated long guy if they need somebody to come in early. 
but everybody else aside from Kimbrell better be ready any part of the ball game. Romero Pena as we showed you stays in to play third for the Braves. Pena's batting at Chris Johnson's spot. Guerin's batting ninth. That spot due third when the Braves come up here in the inning. That's a good point, Joe, with with, with uh, O'Flaherty and and Johnny Venter gone, and those guys, everybody kind of knew their role. But mm -hmm. now with the inexperience, you've got to figure out their role. You just got to be ready to go. That's a that's a good point. And then kind of fall into your category eventually. Freddie Freddie Gonzalez will let you know exactly what your role will be. But right now, be be flexible. That pitch was buried across the shoe tops and Crawford missed it by plenty. One ball, two strikes. Well, we've seen some funny left-handed swings off of that pitch from Corey Gear, and that ball is is seen guys swing at that ball way off the plate. Hard breaking ball in on lefties. To short. Simmons unloads quickly and gets Crawford two out. Base is empty. Let's check in with Tom Hart. Question not only is who will fill in for Eric O'Flaherty now, but down the road. Braves signed Joel Bimel, the veteran left hander today. He'll be assigned to Triple A Gwinnett. He's got 567 games under his belt. Luis Ayala still isn't ready down at Double A. Freddy Gonzalez talked about him today. He said he lost some weight dealing with his anxiety issues, but Freddy Gonzalez loves University of Georgia product Alex Wood, who's really stepped up his game in his second professional season. Thanks in large part to Craig Kimbrell and Johnny Venters who taught him a spike curveball during spring training. Yeah Freddie really raved about Wood during spring training knew that it was too early for him to be on the ball club coming out of camp. But uh, the way he started off in double A might put some pressure on everybody to get him up here pretty soon. Joe Bimel huh. He's been there and done that you bet. Kept tied up inside. It's ball two to the Dodgers center fielder. To third. Old Pena finds the ball and makes a terrific play to retire Matt Kemp. Three up, three down for Corey Guerin. Bottom part of the Braves order coming up. Still one nothing. We wrap up the series here tomorrow afternoon. First pitch 135. Here are 
our Chevron upcoming starters. Don't know a whole lot about Matt McGill, but he has made some starts this year. He, got, he has no decisions as yet. Got to hang an L on him tomorrow. You, know, you see two L's at the end of his name. He just needs one tomorrow. And Mike Miner, who has been arguably the Braves' best pitcher over the last two weeks, he's been pitching really good baseball. Excellent ERA. And he'll be back out there tomorrow afternoon. Need a run, fellas. Down one nothing. And off speed to Dan Ugla misses outside. One ball, no strikes. Ogla, BJ Upton, and then we'll see for the Braves. Kenley Jansen was up and loosening in the Dodger pen an inning ago. We'll see if Capuano gets in trouble. But he comes out first. Low and away, two balls and a strike. Jansen is back up. I see Dan put one of those swings on Capuano like he was using in Cincinnati when he got hot. Oh. Another borderline pitch that was just right. Fly ball right field playable for Efear. Andre has it. Dan's over three and is the first out of the inning. Here's BJ. Two more strikeouts for the Braves center fielder. Sharply hit and through. There's the potential tying run. You know, they've been coming so few and far between for BJ. Uh, and he's had such a rough start that when he does square one up, what a great feeling for him to give him a little positive feedback that some things he's working on are working. He's the perfect guy to have on base right now because he's got great speed and represents the time run. By my count, that's B.J. Upton's first hit since the ninth inning of May 11th. The Braves were in San Francisco. I know he was 0 for his last 16 prior to that hit. That would be it. Well, it was a good swing, and it's good to see him be out front on a fastball. Yeah. He's been laid a lot in between his... Mind is not sure what's coming. That's going to have to just go up, swing it. Good to see him pull a ball on the left side of the field. That base hit was like the one he hit off Chipper's ankle last year down in Tampa. That was a rocket. So the Braves finally get Capuano out of the game. We're in the Dodger bullpen with the tying run aboard in the last of the eighth.
Um, Reed Johnson and Justin Upton. Reed, a terrific pinch hitter, and Justin Upton, a man that saw Kenley Jansen a lot in National League West play as a Diamondback. And Kenley Jansen's a big horse, 6'5, 260, throws hard, goes 95 to 96 miles an hour with a slider, just about a two pitch pitcher only, but he doesn't need a whole lot more. Already this year, 29 strikeouts and 21 plus innings and only five walks. Last year, 65 innings, 99 strikeouts. He had a 2.35 ERA and 25 saves for the Dodgers. And he can bring it. Jansen was originally a catcher in the Dodgers system. But they've converted him very, very effectively. He's out of Curacao. And how about this matchup? Power pitcher, power hitter. Evan Gaddis grabs a bat. And goes to work with one out in the eighth. We were presented last night with our El Oso Blanco t-shirts that are now on sale in the Braves Clubhouse store. Very cool shirts. Well, it's always a tough duty pinch hitting, but in some ways it's an advantage. He hasn't had to face Capuano. <laughs> right. All of a sudden has a completely different visual with height, side of the plate, all gas. That's a good point. And, and you know, fastballs are, are nothing that the Evan Gaddis can't handle. Tough assignment here, no question, though. D rank one call. Jansen took over as the Dodgers closer in May of last year and converted 25 of 32 save chances. And this is low right now. The Dodger closer is Brandon League, another right hander. Good lead for BJ. Good lead, lead for BJ, Joe. You're right, but the, the challenge is when you're not out there that often. Your timing and 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 your, your sense of when to go, when to take a chance, is a little off. Well, and, and the other thing too is he can score from first on a double. Yeah. There's yeah. no urgency to get him to second yeah, base. Good point. Good point. Two balls and a strike. Now let's see if the Dodgers follow the scouting report. That one was letter high. In Phoenix, the Diamondbacks were going chin high or above, and he was chasing. Looks like they did. looks like they want to come up and in. Is that what you saw, Joe? Uh, that was I think that was a signal to throw. 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 Oh, he. He was his. He was doing that thumb. It was to throw. Yeah. Oh, okay. Looks like yeah, they want to go away. So where the target is not up. Got his far off. Stays alive. Think of Kenley Jansen as the Dodgers' version of Craig Kimbrell. In his first 100 innings as a big league relief pitcher, he struck out 167 men. That's second most all time. Wow. Craig Kimball, 170. 
his first 100 innings. So very similar strikeout totals between these two hard throwing relief pitchers. Two balls, two strikes, Upton at first. Yeah, Evan, Evan's a little frustrated. He's had a couple of fastballs to hit. I, I agree with you, Joe. It's kind of interesting that they haven't tried to climb the ladder a little bit on him because he's he comes there again. He could get hurt. A little timing mechanism for mm -hmm. Evan Gaddis. A little forward press, if you will use the, the golf analogy, and you're, you're putting and it goes back and shifts that weight a little bit to get that weight on your back back leg. I like that. Some guys do that with bringing that front foot up a little bit, like Justin Upton. He's reeling him in, fellas. He's getting closer, isn't he? <laughs> They've got a couple of pitches to work with here if they want to get away from the fastball. The, all, the only concern is a lot of times somebody say, well, if he hasn't gotten around your fastball, why throw him anything to speed his bat up? Like a slider and risk making a mistake with it. Again, the 2 2. Say Coach Reed Johnson and Coach Justin ought to feel pretty good about themselves. But you were so right, Chip. He just kept getting closer and closer to that fastball. And boy, was he focused. And now Atlanta leads by a run. And Simmons throws one deep left. Crawford going back. That one's gone. All over that high fastball. Yes, he did. Tomahawked it. His fifth of the year. And Chris Capuano saw his win disappear in a hurry. And this is what I loved. And, and what I want you to pay attention to right up to the point of the home run ball is. The concentration by Evan Gaddis. He's got he's got both eyes squarely on the pitcher on every pitch. And at this point, he started fouling off some pitches and getting some good swings at him. Well, he had that pitch, this pitch, another pitch, three pitches in a row to hit. And then that one's a little bit further in. Yeah, but just glad they didn't listen to your scouting report. Joe didn't come up out of the strike zone. No, they at didn't. All. Did they come in or did he crowd the plate and they came in? I, I'm not That's sure. A little bit of both. He might have moved up on the plate a little bit. Well, how about Evan Gaddis? 
with the Braves outfield back with the Uptons and Hayward and Brian McCann back playing time dwindling for Gaddis. But what a huge contribution in tonight's game. A pinch hit two run homer. His third pinch hit of the year and his second pinch hit homer of the year. I just he's that reminded me of the home run he hit off Strasburg right there. The one on Strasburg was up that was almost impossible to catch up to. That one was down more. But boy oh boy did he get him timed and roped in. Reeled in as you said Chip. Eighth pitch home run by Gaddis. He fouled off four straight. And, and that's just such an impressive at bat when you, you look at his overall lack of major league experience called on to pinch hit in that situation. Pinch hitting there's a there's, there's kind of an art to it. It takes usually a lot of experience. That's just such a great sequence seeing him over there talking to uh, Reed Johnson. Justin Upton Greg Walker was standing right there and it didn't look like Evan was doing any talking he's doing some real good listening and taking it all in. What a great sequence of events. For the back to back homers. Great catch by our camera crew look at this. Justin Upton was two for seven against Kenley Jansen. That's more at bats than any other Brave due to his time with the Diamondbacks. And then Reed Johnson, of course, led the National League in pinch hits last year. Who better to right. listen to? There you go. Jansen only That's gave up stuff. six home runs all last year. I told you about his numbers and all those strikeouts. He gave up six home runs all last year and he gave up two to two hitters. Jumping on some bullpens, aren't they? That's an incredible stat right there. And the Dodgers bullpen is a real problem for them right now. 3 1 Atlanta with three in the eighth. And now Hayward, a oh. comebacker, gloved by Jansen. And it's a good thing he did get a piece of leather on it. Otherwise, that's in center field. Two that outs. Was, that was hit hard, too. That ball just found his glove. Not fooling anybody. Luck for Hayward. Now, I'm not sure if Justin went over and asked Evan Gaddis for a scouting report. <laughs> <laughs> but he's up with two outs and the base is empty. Something else to think about, too, and maybe I'm off base, but the base hit by BJ Upton may have changed the tenor of this inning, too. He was the tying run at first. Jansen may have been worried about him taking off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of throws over. You're right. He was not able to put Gaddis away after getting ahead of him. Yeah, good breaking ball has up to in an even count. One and, ball, one strike. And that's the pitch I thought on two and two after all those foul balls. I thought that's a pitch he might go to, not necessarily for a strike, but just to see if he would commit early on a breaking ball off the plate. Well, I, again, I get, get back to your questioning, Joe, whether the Dodgers had an accurate scouting report on how to pitch to Evan Gaz. I haven't seen him miss fastballs, belt high or lower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he threw him four in a row. On that shot on the bench, it looked like Gaddis was making the, the sign of a cutter. Well, you know, his fastball tonight, I keep looking up yeah. there, there weren't that many 95s and 6s. There were a lot of 90, 91s. And I wonder if he was trying, he's trying a new pitch or something and got burned on it. Well, you don't want to start a cutter inside part of the plate to Evan Gaddis. I don't know what he's thinking. Two balls, two strikes. 
And that's over the inside corner. The Braves with three in the eighth. B.J. Upton singles. Evan Gaddis, his second career pitch at homer. And Angleton Simmons goes back to back, extending the Atlanta lead now to three to one for Craig Kimbrell in the ninth. hit two run homer with the Braves down one nothing turns the game to Atlanta's favor. Hamilton Simmons follow with a solo shot and that sets the stage for Craig Kimball to close things out and make a winner of Corey Guerin in relief. Well, we talked last night about how he had had some rest and looked sharp last night gave up a hit but struck out too. We looked it up about his, his work along with O'Flaherty and it's pretty interesting and we'll get to that. Putting a graphic together for you in just a second. It's Adrian Gonzalez to start the Dodger ninth. Broken bat rolled to short on the first pitch. One out. He just sawed him right off. Here's Heath here. He's over three. Let's not forget tonight either. Braves have given up two hits to the Dodgers. Chris Medlin started seven innings, two hits, one unearned run. Garen worked a perfect eighth. And Kimball gets the first man in the ninth inning with a 3 1 lead. There have been 50 games that Craig Kimball has pitched in since 2011 where he did not work with Eric O'Flaherty. But 108 times they worked together back to back or in the same game rather since 2011 and the Braves are 90 and 18 in those games. And his fastball is explosive. 0-2. I really think that a few days off for him where he did not pitch in Arizona wasn't needed to pitch in Arizona I think did him a world of good. I think you're right. He's feeling it. You're right Joe unlike 93 94. Scoreboard here showing 97 pretty consistently. Well, I remember in Cincinnati the night he gave up the two homers. He hit 96, but it wasn't every pitch. It was like a, a spike, and then it was 93-94. He's consistent now over 95. Hard curveball, and Ethier missed it. Two out. 
That's almost unfair. Yeah, you can't do anything with that pitch. Nothing to feel bad about missing that one. <laughs> one more out to get, then it's Braves live time presented by AT&T. And this big crowd of 38,000 plus rises in unison. Hoping to see the Braves win another home series, this time against the Dodgers. One more to follow here tomorrow afternoon. Here's Skip Schumacher. Strike called outside corner. It's okay on that location there. Good to see him come come up out of the strike zone. I like it. It's a good miss for him. Don't want to mess around and bring the tying run to the plate. Two balls, two strikes to Schumacher. That's ball game. Did the Braves give this crowd a finish tonight or what? Fun stuff. Kimbrell works a 1 2 3 ninth inning to win it for Corey Guerin. And the Braves beat the Dodgers by a final score of three to one. Chris Capuano was in complete command until the Braves take aim at the Dodger bullpen. Evan Gaddis, a game-winning two-run homer. Anderson Simmons with a solo shot as well. And the Braves were on their way. Did he fall down there? <laughs> They're all looking.